Ryan here with Dark Rangers Inc. And today we're kicking off a fun new series where I show you guys how to fix your data. And when I say your data, that's exactly what I mean. I shine the Ranger signal and ask you guys to send me in some final images and the raw data where you weren't fully happy with the end result or maybe you got stuck somewhere along the editing process. Now, I've already done several images, but in an effort to keep these manageable in terms of length, I'm just gonna do one at a time. And a cool side benefit of this is it allows me to interact with data from a variety of different equipment types, whether it's cameras, filters, or scopes, because I wanna do an episode in the near future about order of operation in terms of upgrading and when it's actually worth it. And then at the very end, I'm gonna go over Graxpert for Mac with the new AI edition coming out. There are some little quirks for the Mac system that maybe you don't have to deal with in terms of PC. So if that applies to you, stay tuned till then. And I'm also gonna go over some settings that might help no matter what platform you're on. So we've got a ton of exciting stuff to talk about. And with that, let's dive into the first image from Rodrigo Diaz and his version of the C101 Galaxy. This is Rodrigo Diaz's image. This was shot with a Celestron C8 Edge and a 1600 mm. And I'd I've never actually worked with that camera before. So that was a little bit interesting. And it did teach me a lot about why some people are so particular with dynamic background extraction. Um, with the 2600 series cameras and even my mirrorless, it's far less picky than it was with this. This is what I was able to finalize with. And so I think we were able to make some you know, decent progress. Uh, just to give you an idea, we left PixInsight with this. So if you were working in PixInsight only, this is what I was able to get to. And then I ended up changing the rotation. So even if you weren't using Photoshop, I think we did make a pretty big difference in this image overall. The data, you know, it was from Bortle 6. So it was decent, but obviously when you're using filters that allow so much light through, it's going to be challenging. And so with each of these images, there was kind of a pivotal couple, two or three things that were really key. And I'm going to go through those really quick in my edits. I didn't want to edit them in real time because that would take hours. So the first thing I did was just get a, a dynamic crop. As you can see, there is kind of a square, a rectangle within a rectangle. And so there must have been some rotation between one night to the other. So right here, you can see there's an outline. And so basically, I just try to maximize that rectangle and get as much of that inner rectangle that we can. And then I drag it all the way across uh, really quickly. DBE, I, I had to do a lot of different iterations. So this is kind of my normal process, but you'll see after I run that, that uh, I have some issues. So let's see that first iteration here. It looks like it's gonna be fine. It's a nice smooth gradient, um, but then when you actually go to apply it, you get these weird issues. I tried it on the main thing. And again, you have a nice smooth gradient, but then boom, you see this like donut around the outside. So anyway, I mean, I tried probably five or six different iterations. As you can see by the end, it looked like chicken pox. If you didn't have a spot represented all throughout the image, you were gonna have issues. But I ended up getting pretty smooth backgrounds on all four images. Uh, the blue channel, I think, was probably the best, but we'll kind of speed through that. But as you can see, we got rid of that donut, but you see how many points that we have. I've never had to be anywhere near that particular with my particular setup. And we got through DBE, I ran Blur Exterminator 25 and 60, 25 star reduction, 60 on the sharpening, and then I think I did, yeah, 70 on the noise exterminator just to get a pretty good image and as you can see we got it pretty clean with that just lrgb combination just put the lrgb in the appropriate one i tried a few different iterations you can see we got a lot of blue hue to the image so i did a dbe again on this and again i'm, I'm just trying to find all those dark areas because i know with this camera and this setup that's where I'm gonna have issues. And so I just went around and I did that. And then I ended up cropping in a little bit more just to kind of match. You can see what I ended up with, um, what the background looked like. It was a little little ugly, but we got it, we got through it. I did a quick color calibration. There really wasn't anything there, so I didn't go through the process of doing the full SPCC. Um, I don't know if it had the asymmetric solution. And then um, to match this crop, you can see I'm looking, I ended up doing another crop to kind of match the image. Plus we had some problems still in the corners. Once we got here, this is where the big difference was, I think between mine and Rodrigo's was really in the stretch. You guys know me, I usually like to use GHS, not always. 
Um, but I did a you know 4.6 and then a big 15 on the local intensity. So let's go back to that just because I think some people are still struggling with GHS. So 4.6, I'm a little to the left of that first quartile. And then the second one, uh, about 0.5 and 0.8. And then I just drag that symmetry point across to the right until I get to a spot that I like. I kind of get an idea of where I was dragging around the core um, to see where I'm at. So 0.83, just making sure I don't get close to that 1.0 where the core is blown out. So I'm dragging that protect highlight slider to the left to make sure I'm saving that. And so I just do a handful of stretches. I keep trying to get a little bit more and more, and then I go through each color to try to push some color into it. So I'm gonna slide through so you guys can see me working through that. Now you can see I'm starting to get some blue and purple into the mix, so it's not so monochrome looking. Um, and so sometimes you gotta, and so you can see kind of where we're at from where Rodrigo's image was to this spot right here. We'll show you in a sec. So there we go. There's, there's where his was at, his final image. And then here's where we're at going into Photoshop. So we've made some nice progress, do a little bit of curves, but you guys know me, I really like to do that stuff in Photoshop. So we jump into there and then I just do basically the same process I did on my Photoshop video that didn't get a ton of views for some reason, despite the fact that I know a lot of people say they struggle with it. So please check that one out. Um, I kind of zero out the background. That's what I'm gonna call that. So when I say zero out the background, what I'm doing is essentially I'm going into curves and I'm taking each color and in this bottom left corner, I'm sliding it over just to get it out of the background and I'm trying to get a nice flat background. So in future videos or whatever, if I see zero out the background, the rifleman in me, that's what I think of. I'm just getting it basically to a neutral black. I go into camera raw filter and just go from the top down. You guys have seen me do this now a couple times and this is all to taste. Now the curves in here, I'm targeting more of the actual galaxy. So you'll see that's being affected more. These curves do work differently as they are opposing colors. On um, the curves on the outside, when you subtract, you're just subtracting either the R, G, or B. With this one, if I, sub if I pull down from the green, I'm actually going into magenta. And so I play around with that. I go into my HSL tabs and I play around with the hue, saturation, and luminance. Um, I'm trying to get some different color in the core and try to bring out some of the lightness in the core. Uh, to do that, I then go into selective color. I choose whites, and as you can see, I'm really affecting that central area or the brightest area of the photo, which is where the whites are gonna be. I'm just trying to get some kind of different color in there because I pulled up, I've never done C101 myself, but I pulled up an image from NASA and I saw that it did have kind of a brighter yellowish white core. And so I'm trying to get some of that going. I go into the magentas, finally get it to a point where it's somewhat different. And then I go through and do one final round through camera raw, then Topaz denoise. You can see there still is some noise lingering. Topaz just does such a nice job on a fully stretched image. It works really well on non-linear data. And then um, some Topaz sharpening. You can see it does a nice job just bringing some of the details. I end up doing a mask on topaz sharpening because I just, I didn't want it to hit the stars. So you can just grab a brush and just go ahead and brush in. You can change the size and the softness. And so I'm just going in here and I'm brushing in some of the details. I know it's some additional money, but I really do like having sharpening and denoise in addition to the RC Astro. If it's something that you guys are serious in, it might be something you want to consider. I did the final crop and the rotation to give it more of that 3D look. Now there's some depth kind of from front to back. And, um, you know, given the data that we had to work with, I'm, you know, I'm fairly happy with it. I think if you look at it in terms of the improvement, again, comparing it to the original, I think we, we did a nice job and hopefully Rodrigo feels the same way. I did send him the results and he did seem pretty happy. So again, it's nice to see, you know, what's possible with the data i'm not you know the best editor but i you know i do i do process several photos a week and i'm constantly pushing my boundaries and trying new things and so that is our first target all right so hopefully the editing portion was helpful i'm going to show you guys graxpert 4 mac real quick as promised so using the link in the description you're going to want to get the most recent version the one that was five days ago go ahead and download that 
And then you're also gonna need to download the background model. Don't worry about opening up the file. Just click on the three dots and hit download. It'll show up obviously then in your downloads BG model. Now for Mac specifically, before you actually try to install it, you're gonna wanna go to your settings and then privacy and security, go to app management, and then you actually need to add Graxpert in. So hit the little plus sign. It's gonna ask for your password. You'll see Graxpert in there once you've actually downloaded it and then go ahead and add that. Once you have added it and installed it, you're gonna to go to Finder, Applications, right click on Graxpert, Show Package Contents, and you're gonna double click on Contents and then double click on Mac OS, so you have to go through both folders, and then you're gonna drag and drop that BG model. So if it was, whether it was in your downloads or wherever you saved it to, you need to put that BG model in there so the AI can work. If you don't want to use the AI, you don't need to do that. Um, jumping in really quick to using it, you're just going to go ahead and load image. And as we know, the major issue that we had in that edit was around the background. So let's go ahead and open one of those files. And we can see the um, original. I'm going to go ahead and reset the sample points. Now you can just go to AI mode down here and then just calculate background. If it doesn't have a stretch applied, um, 15 or 20 percent seems to work pretty good and then go to AI uh, and then calculate background there is a smoothing amount I didn't see a huge difference so then it shows you you got your original your processed and then the actual background model so you can see what it actually got rid of if we do the smoothing all the way to the left let's run it again so to zero and let's see how much of a difference we got. Not too much, maybe a little uh, bit more fine detail kind of pulled out of there. Now, I wanted to try the original method too because I'm new to this, so I wanted to compare and contrast. And so let's go back to the original. And the points per row, uh, 10 is pretty good. The grid tolerance, the higher the number, the more intrusive it's going to be into the target. So if we go all the way to 10, for example, and I create the grid, you're gonna have spots um, kind of in the galaxy. If I bring that down to, let's say five, right? It took a couple more. If I go down to one, it's gonna avoid it even more. So, it, you know, you can just kind of find an area that works for you. In this case, one or even zero, probably one is where we, we wanna be. It's got everything pretty well covered, nothing in the galaxy that's, that's gonna be too harmful. And then again, calculate background. And then we can see the background here. Definitely different. So it's really up to you what you think is the better. Here is the manual method. And then going to the AI method. I know that we like things, you know, super easy. But I would argue, you know, if you look it up here in this problem area, I would argue the manual method may be a little bit better. So let's... I, to me, I think that's a better result. And when all you have to do, again, is just hit click create grid, it's pretty simple. Once you've got your grid tolerance set and your points per row set, it's about as automatic as it can be. And then if you're gonna take it into Photoshop, you wanna save it as a 16-bit TIFF, and I'll show you why. If you save it as a 32, it's gonna look really bright. And then you're gonna have to go to image mode and convert it to 16-bit in this conversion uh, depending on your settings here, it can kind of mess everything up. So you're better off if you're going into Photoshop to save it into 16-bit mode so that it comes out looking like this does. So this was my Graxpert. Um, I took the final image that I got in that edit that you guys just saw. I applied Graxpert and I think I got even a little bit better results. So when I say zero out the background, I thought I kind of had, um, but there was you know, some, some normalization that still needed to occur. And I think we got an even better final result with Graxpert. But when I tried to install it, I got an error message. I didn't know how to overcome it. So I thought for Mac users, I would show you guys how to um, process it specifically as well. Hopefully that was helpful, guys. Keep the images coming to my inbox. And uh, until the next one, clear skies. Yeah.